Chris Zielinski, as you guys know, one of the best distance runners, was coaching the Florida distance program, men mm -hmm. and women. Uh, we know what he did with Parker Valby. She had a phenomenal cross-country season. Looks to be one of the favorites go <clears throat> with Caitlin Tui going into indoor and outdoor. But he is going to Oregon. Mm -hmm. to pair up with Schumacher. And it kind of... And mixed, Flanagan. And Flanagan. Yeah. It's kind of getting the band back together a bit. Um, does Schumacher coach... How, how many years has Schumacher coached Zelensky for? Oh, a bunch. Like, I mean, did you, you associate... Yeah. Zelensky with Schumacher in terms of, of his coach. But like how many years has it been since they were like together? <laughs> oh, was, was he last active he re in retired in what, 15? 15 or 16, 15 or 16. Say, so yeah. he's been away for about, you know, seven years or mm -hmm. eight years. Can't keep them apart as uh, <laughs> he comes back to, not back to Oregon, but to Oregon. Yeah. Gonna be assistant coach. Makes sense. It kind of allows for Schumacher to kind of not be as hands on with the distance programs because now he has Selinski and uh, Flanagan to kind of take that yeah. reign. So now I think Schumacher now can focus more on big picture track stuff and then also the Bowerman team. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think it allows him to, he needs extra hands. Yeah. And Selinski clearly has found a way to transition into the collegiate coaching realm pretty well. He started at William and Mary, Florida. He was able to get the Florida women's team qualified. Mm -hmm. Their DMRs were getting there, and obviously Parker Valby, boom, after you do that, it's like, that's, that's what you expect mm -hmm. from someone. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, what do you think of this transition, well, and what do you think he's going to do that for them? Well, were you surprised mid-season? I was a little bit there. Yeah. We, we've seen the mid-season athlete going pro phenomenon pick up, which, but this is a little different than that. But also, you could argue, like, you know, Schumacher was hired late. Right, he was, and Solinsky's yeah. probably not going to like up his life. Like, hey, I just got the team together across country. I really feel me and Parker and I are kind of look. This is looking good. Yeah, it's not a good point to like right before the cross country season to be like, yeah. see, I'm out. It makes more sense, you know, do a complete full season, and then kind of do that that refresh in December. Yeah, I mean, it's a clear signal where Oregon's focus is going to be going forward, yeah. which is no surprise because Schumacher was hired as the coach as a distance guy. But it hasn't always been like that under the previous coach, Robert Johnson. Yeah. They scored a ton of points in sprints and they scored a ton of points in field events as well, too. But now you have two assistants in Flanagan and Selinski focused on distance, in addition to Jerry knowing stuff, obviously, about distance. So, you know, kind of rekindling the distance focused uh, heartbeat of Oregon. So. You brought up a good point, though, with Bowerman, because you can't exclude that from the conversation as well, too, because they're training at the same time as well, too. So, yeah, it does free Jerry up to deal with that. All this stuff is super time-consuming, especially at Oregon, because on top of all the recruiting stuff, you have being the face, being the voice of track and field in Eugene, in Tracktown, USA, putting on all the home meets, all that stuff. It's not, it's not a regular coaching job. Yeah, at Oregon. So bringing in people, You're like the mayor of track. Yeah, and then, which is a weird position for Schumacher to be in because he's not he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. He doesn't want to be the mayor, right? But then he took the job to be the mayor. Yeah, exactly. Which is tough. And then you and I immediately started pestering with questions. You famously he's while eating an ice cream cone that was melting that fateful day in Eugene, which is a great career highlight for me to witness that firsthand. But yeah, there's just a lot of trust there. Yeah, between those three. Not only Solinsky going back to college and then pro group, and even the, the Bowerman side of things too, right? He's familiar with all that stuff. Um, it just, it, it makes a lot of, like when you think about it, you're surprised, but then you're thinking, oh, this makes a ton of sense. And if you have a chance to coach with your mentor, right? The person who coached you is probably fulfilling for him. I remember I asked Chris at NCAAs, because I was like, hey, does, Parker's racing style kind of reminds me a little bit of you in terms of hard charging and, and getting after it. And he said, oh, yeah, after the outdoor 5,000, you know, Jerry reached out to me and said the same thing. So, you know, they're obviously close. They've been close for, for a while. Um, he lived many years in Oregon, in Portland. So it all, it all makes sense. It's just a lot of big name on one coaching staff. Yeah. And a lot of big names on the track. 
who are going to be pros, like the Bauer, all the Bowerman athletes yeah, are there. And like, yeah, yeah. Now, obviously, they're not doing the actual practice. It's separate, and you know Schumacher will always say it's separate, and I get that. But at the same time, you know that if you're an Oregon runner, mm-hmm. there's going to be situations where you are going to be near Grant Fisher and Christian Schweizer and the the Bowerman people yeah. because yeah. your your coach is their coach. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do think for also for Selinski, like he gets to go from a program where Florida is one of the you could argue the best track program in the country, mm-hmm. but for them, distance is bonus points. It's not the main foundation of yeah. how Mike Holloway has built the program. Uh, but for Oregon, distance won't be bonus points. Mm-hmm. You know, distance will be the main priority. So Selinski is going to be able to go into a place where he's going to have a lot more recruiting dollars, right? Because he's going to yeah. have a lot more scholarships available for recruiting distance runners than he did at Florida. Yeah. Um, because Florida prioritizes sprint right. hurdles. Right, as jumps. well they should. Yeah. Because they have a successful formula that's worked and they've won a ton of championships. But if you are a distance coach, I could see, hey, you want to yeah. try to coach um, for a school that's going to get the best, you, yeah. the best distance athlete, right? Every coach talks about that. When coaches, regular coaches go from whatever conference they're into the SEC, if they're sprint and field event coaches, they talk about, yeah, wanting to do it in the SEC because it just is different when you have dollars behind that sort of program and the level of competition that you need like you want to see if you think you're a good coach you want to see how well you can coach the best athletes 